All right, guys, let's see how we can access different properties from an object literal. And let's say that we have the following object uh, where we have one user with a key of country and city set. So in order to get the keys and their values, we can use the following loop. So we create one new temporary variable property of all those keys uh, from the object user. And then we would like to list them via the console. So we'll type console log. We'll have here the property. So for the value, we can get, for example, user dot uh, property. And when we run this, we'll see that it will not work correctly. But let's first run it. And we see that we are getting the keys. So all those keys, we're getting them correctly, uh, country and city but we are unable to browse through the values and that's because they are in the format of a string and we should use instead of the dot notation the brackets notation so if i may correct this it should be something like this the syntax in this way we are doing exactly the same operation and when we run the code we see that uh, we have a proper display of all those values uh, just because the lookup of the values is done dynamically with the usage of those brackets. Okay, let's uh, now have a user with uh, the same information, but this time uh, inside of the object literal of user, we'll have a function of update city, which is an oral function and tries to update the uh, city property of the user object by issuing user dot update city and then let's say we'll place another city name afterwards we can see what's inside uh, of the user city so type user dot city and we see that it stays the same value as before and the reason for this is because we're using an arrow function inside of the object literal and the arrow function is actually not bound to this object context, but it's bound to the global window object context. That's why we're not modifying the city value of the object. So in such cases, it's best not to use arrow function, but a normal function here as a method of this object. So we can rewrite our code function. This will be the input parameter, and this will be the body of the function. All right, I'll just refresh and run the code. All right, we have the same functionality. And let's see what's inside of the user uh, city. We see that it works correctly. And that's because we used uh, a normal function, which will bind correctly. And we'll be able to use uh, the context of the user object. Uh, as we are referencing it here in this uh, dot city. All right, let's have again the same object. And here we'll add a little piece of code in order to see how we can uh, integrate a set timeout within this uh, object. So I'll just uh, paste the function called get city. So this function will actually display the value of the current user city after one second. Defined uh, this way, we can issue user dot uh, get city, and we should be able to see after one uh, second that we get the value. So this code works because we're using here an arrow function, and uh, that's an interesting case because usually set timeout is bound to the window object. But this is the case when we are using a normal function. When we're using an arrow function, the context is derived from the current uh, lexical scope, which is of the user object. If we repeat the same code, but this time we use a normal function, this code will produce an error. So we can try to rewrite the function with a normal function here. And again, will issue the user.getCity. The output is undefined because we are trying to reach window.city because the this keyword is bound to the 
window object, not to the user object. Alright guys, I hope the video was revealing interesting uh, details of some of the differences between uh, arrow functions and normal ones and how in practice we can uh, use uh, them in order to facilitate our calling experience. If you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you.